What's up, y'all? Hope everybody's well. Welcome to the Honest Reports Black Masculinist News for the day. Um, just trying to get my head clear this last few days. So much going on, it's sometimes hard to keep up. Um, plus, you know, we all got our own home responsibilities and whatnot. But today, just a slight quick word about something that um, I think needs a little more attention. It's not so much a complaint about anyone in particular, but about us as a group, as a society, and how we view um, who actually needs help, right? So one of the first things we can get to uh, in today's news is something I ran across kind of organically the other day, right? And that was the Sean Carter Foundation website. Right, Sean Carter Foundation website. Y'all know Sean Carter is also a hip hop artist, Jay Z, and in alignment with his mother, Gloria Carter, he started a foundation. And one of the things they have is a scholarship fund. Um, and so they give us a little bit of a breakdown on who's in the scholarship fund, right? And they tell us here: seventy nine percent come from single parent households, sixty four percent are first generation college students. 50 U.S. states are represented in the applicant pool. 77% of, of the uh, SCF scholars, so Sean Carter Foundation scholars, represent households uh, with incomes less than 40,000. From this group, 59% are under the national poverty line. Now, there's not a lot of information available as far as past recipients, but there is a little, right? They show uh, about six um or seven altogether. No, I'm sorry, eight. So um, in one group, they had three sisters, a Latino dude, and uh, two black males, right? Um, and in another section, they had, let me see, they had a black male and a black female as far as past uh, recipients. Um, and the eligible, uh, real quick, the eligible, uh, excuse me, the eligibility requirements um, are that the students first uh, pursue, you know, students are pursuing their first undergraduate degree. You have to be a high school senior or students with a GED enrolled for two to four years in an undergraduate program uh, or a, a vocational or trade school, which is cool. A U.S. citizen, 25 years old or younger, minimum 2.0 GPA, household income not exceeding. 75,000, right? And when you look to what they call their current scholars, they have two, they have a black male and a black female. Um, and then when they go to their alumni, that's where they have the six listed. And as I said, it was uh, three sisters, a uh, Latino dude and two brothers. Now, the reason I bring this up is because when I started thinking about some of these scholarships, even when I was a kid, I remember how few of them were actually dedicated to black males. And I still think that tends to be the case. But when you factor that in with the specific programs and small business support uh, 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 structures that were put in place last year during the pandemic, we virtually found none targeted at black males, despite the, you know, the, the mass level of uh, of incarceration, unemployment, so on and so forth. Very little. And so when I ran across this particular website, I expected more. I was hoping that there might be some kind of targeted uh, focus on, uh, you know, on, on black males, at least coming from a black hip hop artist. Uh, not so much the case. Uh, nevertheless, they state uh, on the site that the foundation uh, was founded on the belief that any motivated individual in need should have the opportunity to further his or her education by removing some of the financial burdens associated with going to surviving in and graduating from college the SCSF plays a vital role in increasing college access and success for many motivated yet undeserved youth and, and young adults. See, so, you know, it, they say it provides individual grants paid directly to the educational institution, to every student who qualifies and so on and so forth. Generic, right? But we do this, right? We do these kind of things, right? Generic help for anyone who needs it, right? And when it comes to the black community, more often than not, who qualifies as anyone are seldom black males. 
And I just thought this was an interesting situation where you thought there might be more because when you also step back and look at it, you know, um, both Jay-Z and uh, Beyonce have uh, two separate foundations, really. Uh, Beyonce also has the Bay Good Foundation, right? And this is her charity program created during the Miss Carter World Tour in 2013. And in addition to funding scholarships, Bay Good also works with other local charities to help fundraise and raise awareness for local causes. Her charity has also promised to help UNICEF provide clean water to the country of Burundi. So Flint, Chicago, anyway. Uh, Sean Carter Foundation was founded as a public charity in 2003, and so we go from there. So in both cases, you find this interesting moment, right, where there's this kind of generic sense that uh, we represent everybody, we look out for everybody. And when we look at the Bay Good Foundation, this is one of the things we see on the Beyonce website, right? Several different posts here. Uh, for Women's History Month, you know, the essential workers, the entertainers, the truth sayers, the rule breakers, right? So again, when it comes to identifying and targeting uh, black women, there's no problem. When it comes to, you know, trying to uplift black communities, even though that usually is articulated as helping black women in particular, again, no problem. Any open targeting toward black males, not so much. And nobody says anything. It's just an accepted truth, right? This is just how it goes. And this is one of the things that, that I'm calling out. Now, one one thing that I thought was cool, you know, that I think we could look at was um, recently toward Morehouse, there was um, a $2 million gift from the Ray Charles Foundation to establish scholarships, right? And uh, this is basically uh, uh, coming out of HBUC, HBCUConnect.com. Morehouse College receives a $2 million gift, right? And it, it reads, um, you know, they received $2 million gift from the Ray Charles Foundation to provide scholarships to outstanding business majors. The foundation is dedicated to promoting excellence in academics and the arts and supporting charitable causes championed by the late legendary Grammy, Grammy Award winning musician Ray Charles. Contribution expands the foundation's legacy of support for Morehouse. Since 1995, the nonprofit has donated more than 9.6 million to the college, uh, including serving as a major investor in the construction of the Ray Charles Performing Arts Center, Ray Pack, in 2013. Ray Pack is the creative home of the Morehouse College Glee Club and the Morehouse College House of Funk Marching Band. So nine million since 2013, which is great. But one and 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 you know we can couple this with Robert Smith. And some of the things he's done in recent years at Morehouse. And we understand why they do it. Because Morehouse is the easiest way where you can actually donate to black males without having to say so. Because even, what does the Ray Charles Foundation even say? It's for outstanding business majors. So we had this issue at, at Fresno State as well. When I tried to create programs that actually targeted black men, one of the first things that the campus lawyer told us was, you know, we have to be careful about the language. Because helping black men in particular, you can't do that. It can be viewed as being racist. This is why so many institutions try this rising, you know, tide lifts all boats crap. It doesn't work. But one of the reasons they do it is they're afraid of a backlash of being sued for being racist by identifying, targeting, and trying to help some of the most vulnerable groups. And so in turn, we have scholarships coming from celebrities, and these really should be, you know, federally based, really. But nevertheless, this is one of the things we grapple with, right? How to actually target black males, whether you be a celebrity, a wealthy philanthropist, an organization, an institution, um, or if we're writing a policy, how do we actually target black males in a manner where they can be helped directly? Right? Because one of the things I noticed on the Sean Carter Foundation is the models, you know, were women, the majority of the board were women, the recipients were mostly women. And that's kind of how, how it kind of happens. And I noticed this Again, at my campus and campus, at campuses I've been to prior to that, you know, when, when something was earmarked for black folk, it was overwhelmingly implemented toward black women. And that had a lot to do with the fact that the people doing the implementation, even though the language was generic and it was supposed to help black folk, they themselves were mostly women and they targeted mostly women and girls. And if you said anything about it, it was considered uncouth. And if you did say something about it, people gave you a blank stare and kept it pushing. 
This is one of the reasons why I left some of the generic programs I was helping with. And I actually designed a program for black males at my campus, unapologetically so. And I didn't even tie it to the institution when I designed it because I didn't want them imposing those kind of generic policies that would turn my program for black males into a program for everybody. Now, everybody don't need a goddamn help. So in that respect, although I dig what Morehouse is doing, the problem with it, however, is that everybody don't go to Morehouse. And we have to find ways to help black males beyond just the, the one institution where we're seeing black males. In, you know, it, we have to find new ways to actually target them. And most particularly ADOS, FBA, black males, st straight up. There has to be a way. Because when I notice when campuses say they're going to target and increase, you know, they're going to target the black community to increase their student presence, right? Black student presence. A couple of things to end up kind of happening at the same time. Overwhelmingly, the majority of those who are identified are, are women and girls, right? That's the first thing. And again, I'm not hostile toward that. I just notice a lack of focus on black males that I think increases our problems. And I think it needs to be more balanced. And hell, balance in this respect might mean a targeting of black males solely for a while. Because as we learned five years ago, black women were the most you know, highly enrolled demographic in the country across race. Well, if that's the case, can we, can we target the boys for a while? Can we target the men? Can that be a focus? Because I'm tired of seeing two black males in my class if I'm lucky. And most of the time they're on the basketball team which is not a negative. It just means they have a whole separate entity that advocates for them, even academically. Those who are not in sports programs, those are the most vulnerable black males I see on every campus I've been to. So I would like to actually see it target ADOS males. I would like, to, like especially non-athletes. I would like to see us find new ways to center them in the discussion on who needs help transitioning from K through 12 to a four year situation or vocation or trade you know actually having their tuition paid so they can study and often take care of families which is what many of them many of them do, are doing you know even especially if they're first generation a lot of them are having that issue i mean i remember that being the case even when i was an undergrad I mean, i was I, you know i noticed other kids were, were were getting loans and scholarships and whatever i was sending money home That's, I mean, that's not supposed to be how you go to college, but that's what happens when you're coming from a community without inherited wealth. It is what it is, right? So in that respect, I, I dig what's happening at Morehouse. I would like to see it happen a, in a way that's not just at Morehouse, but targets ADOS, FBA, black males, especially black males in general, ADOS males in particular, um, and, and, you know, again, non-athlete, especially, um, and in terms of academics and vocations, vocational trade school, uh, uh, degrees, we got to find certification. We got to find ways to actually do that because this hyper uh, in, increases our, invo our vulnerability and makes it that much more difficult for us to navigate these spaces. Cause I can't tell you how many young black males I've known personally that have had to drop out mainly to support themselves, let alone family. And so, again, once we start having these conversations with institutions about increasing that, and that takes a great deal of pressure to get to the point where you can pressure a university to finally sit down and say, OK, we will go out and target the black community. It ends up being everybody but the black males we need most in these spaces. And why do we need them most? Because they're there the least. And this, in turn, impacts families, future families to too great a degree. Black males need a variety of options in terms of how they're able to employ themselves or find employment. And that means starting out, helping them as young as possible. And we got to find ways where we can do that unapologetically that don't end up prioritizing everybody but them. So, fellas, I hope you'll help me in endeavor in that, help us craft the language for it. But we need to find a way to do it because this mess is getting ridiculous. And when we do have celebrities and philanthropists that step forward, um, if any of you are listening or receive this message, I would urge you to find a way to prioritize that because this lifting, this rising tide lifts all boats. Crap does not 
work when it comes to black males. All right, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Peace.